Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, our remarkable panel of nominees uh, for your dedication, your willingness to serve, uh, for all that you are going to bring uh, to your service. Um, listening to your individual stories, to the journeys that brought you here, was inspiring to me. Uh, we stand at a moment when the American people are looking to us here in Washington, in the federal government, in the Biden administration, in the federal judiciary, here in Congress, uh, to see their problems, to hear their concerns, and to actually deliver some meaningful solutions. Um, so if I can, uh, Ms. Strickland, um, I just wanted to ask you a quick question about the difference between an advocate and a judge and how you understand those different roles, and then I'm going to get into more law enforcement-related issues for our remaining nominees. Ms. Strickland? Thank you for that question, Senator. As an advocate, my role was defined by the Sixth Amendment, um, to zealously work within the bounds of law and the best interests of my client, and I've had to try to do that over my career. Um, the role of a judge is quite different. Um, the role of the judge is also defined under the Constitution. The, the judge is to approach every case neutrally, um, with deliberately putting aside any personal opinions the judge might have in order to fairly consider the facts, the law, and the argument of counsel. Um, well, thank you, uh, Ms. Strickland. If I might also, uh, Ms. Jadu, um, USCIS, I've gotten a number of calls, as uh, has my colleague, Senator Hirono, about the backlog uh, for USCIS for fingerprinting, specifically in Delaware which has put thousands of Delawareans' lives on hold, uh, keeping them from visiting loved ones or getting jobs. USCS has made some strides recently um, to address this and has cut the backlog in half, um, including by eliminating some unnecessary requirements imposed by the previous administration. Can you speak to how you will address these ongoing processing backlogs and, and commit to keeping me updated on the situation in my home state? Thank you, Senator, and thank you for that question. Uh, this is exactly why I, I think this is the right moment for me in this job. I have been in that agency and I understand those little minute steps can really create backlogs, time sensitive backlogs. And I have seen it so I could hit the ground running. I have built such wonderful relationships with the dedicated men and women at USCIS whom I admire tremendously. And I know I can work with them and not just them, it's partner agencies as well, that we need to build strong working relationships. And I have a running start. Well, I look forward to working with you in that context. And I know there's Absolutely. thousands of families in my state that are um, looking for some relief uh, from these significant challenges. Mr. Chipman, if I might, um, Senator Cornyn and I um, have recently reintroduced a bill, the Nix Denial Notification Act, uh, which would require federal authorities to notify state and local law enforcement <laughs> When someone goes in, lies on their background check form, tries to buy the gun, and this is someone who's a person prohibited, so it's against the law for them to get that gun. Current law does not require any notice to local law enforcement. There were 100,000 federal background check denials in 2019. In some states, because the background check goes through state police, they get immediate notification, but in a majority of states, including mine, they don't. Can you help explain why it's an urgent warning sign when someone uh, tries to buy a gun, fails their background check because they're lying, they're a convicted felon, say, and they're trying to get their hands on a gun. Why is this something we should take up and pass a bill to require notification to state and local law enforcement? Senator, uh, first, uh, thank you for the question and thanks for your dedication to this important issue. Um, I view this as a near miss. In many professions, you study a near miss because you feel lucky that the bad thing didn't happen. If someone's willing to go into a gun store and lie and commit a federal felony, we shouldn't expect that it stops there because there are loopholes in the law. Um, as ATF agents, it's our job to ensure that the information we have is in the hands of local police who might um, come across these people. Um, so it's not only uh, good policy, it's a way ATF can support uh, local law enforcement and keep them safe. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to ask about what we're going to be doing together uh, to not just make law enforcement more transparent, more accountable, um, but to make law enforcement more effective uh, I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. Um, you just heard from Senator Ossoff from Georgia concerns about uh, a rise in violent crime in cities in his state, in Savannah, in Augusta, and Atlanta. Uh, in my hometown of Wilmington, despite the best efforts of our mayor and governor and our police department, uh, we have seen a steady rise in violent gun crime. 
Um, Mr. Polite, I understand um, from your testimony, you became interested in serving as a prosecutor when your own half-brother was murdered. And you've spent time clerking for Judge Ambrose, a personal friend on the Third Circuit, and serving in the Skadden Arps office in Wilmington, a place I was a summer associate. So you know a thing or two about my hometown. Uh, Mr. Chipman um, and Ms. Milgram, you're nominated uh, to lead the ATF and DEA and to work alongside Mr. Polite, who will be leading, um, hopefully, DOJ uh, criminal division. Um, and all three of you have significant experience uh, in law enforcement and have great experience in addressing violent crime in American cities. Uh, Ms. Milgram, you spoke about Camden and the work that you did. Um, I'd be interested in um, hearing from each of you what role you see in coordinating between the ATF, DEA, and DOJ's criminal division to reduce violence in our communities. Um, whether you'll commit to staying engaged uh, with me and with other members of this committee in the Senate as we work with our local communities to try and address and interrupt the ways in which um, drugs and guns and gangs and violence seem to be going together, um, and how you see um, this journey, should you be confirmed, of trying to bring more peace, more justice, and more order to our communities. If we could, in order, Mr. Chipman, Ms. Milgram, Mr. Polite. Senator, uh, first, yes, I commit to this collaborative approach. Um, it's one I found effective at ATF, um, and I do believe that the AT, uh, ATF will have information and intelligence and techniques and technology uh, that when married with the ground truth that a local law enforcement agency has, um, that that's a good pathway to preventing violent crime. Ms. Milgram. Thank you, Senator. Uh I've had a job as a state chief law enforcement officer where a prior attorney general had taken over the police department of one of the most dangerous cities in America. So I understand this concern. Um, and my belief is that one of the things we did there was we partnered with the DEA, we partnered with ATF, we partnered with other local law enforcement agencies and state agencies in order to do a concerted effort to reduce violence, improve community relations, and bring accountability. And it was incredibly effective. Um, if I'm confirmed to, to lead the DEA, I believe that one of the great strengths of the DEA today is its partnerships with states and local law enforcement. Um, they're a big part of running task forces across the country and also sit as an important part of HIDA. So I am deeply committed to addressing the issues of, of violent crime. Um, drugs drive violence in, in our communities. In Camden, it was a huge part of the work we did was drug related. Um, so you have my full commitment, if I'm confirmed, to partner with you, other members of this committee and Congress, um, as well as with the other agency heads in the Department of Justice in any way, in any way that I can to be helpful on this. Thank you, Ms. Milgram. Mr. Polite. Senator, thank you for this question, and uh, thank you for your commitment to this to this area. I would also note that I'm a proud member of the Delaware Bar, and most importantly, my wife was born in Wilmington. So uh, we have very close ties to your state. Like my colleagues assembled here, I share in this commitment to collaboration in this area. During my time as U.S. Attorney, this is exactly the way we approached many of the same violent crime issues that crippled the city of New Orleans. And what we did was establish what was called a multi-agency gang unit. It included agents from ATF, DEA, other state, local, and federal law enforcement agencies that worked shoulder to shoulder, not just in, sh not just in terms of sharing intelligence, but actual personnel in, in space where they investigated those cases and ultimately decided what was the appropriate venue in order to address violent crime that was caused disproportionately by a small number of individuals in the New Orleans area. That level of collaboration is what I view as being the hallmark of our work then, and I look forward to, if I'm confirmed, to lending my voice to those same discussions and that same level of collaboration that you articulated. Well, well thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm not just a member of this committee, I'm a member of the subcommittee that funds uh, all of federal law enforcement, DOJ, ATF, DEA, uh, and I look forward to working with you uh, because we have a real challenge in this country. We need to strengthen our communities. We need to strengthen families. We need to push back on the drivers uh, of violence and uh, division. Um, but we also need to provide more effective, more timely, more relevant federal resources to support state and local law enforcement and communities as they are trying uh, to bring peace to our streets and justice to our country. So I look forward to working with all of you Thank you for your willingness to serve, and Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the time to question. 
Thank you, Senator.